35. Nick. Jenna hadn't stopped harassing me after I told her that she was going to be me. Impossible to go to Lion's party. She was full of work and to be able to go. She had to not only cancel like five meetings that week, but also. She had arranged to meet with a real estate agent to put the apartment up for sale. She was carrying out all the necessary actions to transfer me. Definitely to Los Angeles again, it was the best thing, not only for me, that she had. To my entire family in California, but also for the company. I had already fulfilled. With my stay in New York, things were in order and going well. The time had come to end my retirement. The primary reason for having moved my life to the Big Apple was. I had been getting as far away from Noah as possible, but I was tired of staying on the sidelines. Shade. My sister was there, my father, my friends, as well as the family. Of Sophia, although I didn't care too much about this detail either. The phone rang again in my hand and with a snort I answered the disorder. Of my friend. The traffic was unbearable and I had to look at both of them several times. Sides of the road to cross so that no one would take me in front of me, that was. Another, life in New York sucked my vital energy, I needed the beach. Urgently. You're being really annoying, Jenna, I said, and even I noticed the tone. Pissed off at my voice. Look, Nicholas Capullo Leister, she replied and I couldn't help but let out a surprised laughter. It's your best friend's birthday, the person who loves you. He has always supported you, and he has been by your side every time you screwed up. Tedium. Shelter when you ran away from home. Have you forgotten? And you are the godfather of our wedding, so get your ass over here if you don't want me to go there and I'll kick you. Before I could answer I heard a noise on the other end of the line and the next to speak was Lion. Hello, uncle, he greeted me and I listened carefully to what was happening to thousands of people. Kilometers of distance dash. Jenna, go away, let me talk to him. God. You are unrecognizable, baby. He reproached him, I finally heard how a door. It closed. Nick, you have to come. I rolled my eyes. Look, I know it's your birthday, I'm really sorry to miss it. But I'm at the top. It's going to be impossible for me, I'm sorry. It's because of Noah, he said then, and that made me stop in my tracks. Middle of the street, causing some to almost collide with me, the tone of. My friend's voice, however, deserved that reaction. What's wrong with Noah? I asked as he turned a corner and got into. On a less busy side street. I don't know, well yes. He hurt his back three weeks ago, he's been at home. He has had to rest, he can barely move. In the back. What the hell has been done to make them leave her for so long? Resting. All right. It's bad. In my mind I was already cancelling all of them and each of the meetings in the coming days. Lion was silent for a few seconds. Something's not right with me, man. Jenna is very strange, I had not seen her so. She's stressed in my life, and then there's Noah. I don't know, she says her neck hurts. Behind her, but the other day I saw her moving without a problem, I think they are up to something and. That it is better that you are here. That was all ridiculous, but if Noah was sick. How the hell did he get hurt? What was he doing? Lion let out a deep sigh. He was carrying boxes, he is moving apartment. I know he should have told you. Said, but Jenna has insisted that we can't keep telling you things. Without Noah's consent. Why the hell is she leaving the apartment? If it is paid until June. 
I shouted. As he crossed another street and raised his hand to order a taxi. Yeah, but Noah doesn't know anything about that, remember? She believes that the floor. It was paid off a year after Briar left. That's what you told him. Tell the landlady, right? I got into the taxi and barked the address at the driver. Damn woman, I exclaimed through clenched teeth. Where is she living now? Now with us, but he has rented a loft off campus. I could not believe it. I had made sure that Noah was going to live in the apartment he had shared with Briar for at least another year. A. Loft. The off-campus area was shitty and dangerous if she was going to live alone. Look, Nick, I've already told you what I think you should do, I don't. I understand women, and even less those two, but I know that something is not right and that. It is related to you. When have you seen Jenna insist so much about something she doesn't? Would involve going shopping. On another occasion I would have laughed, but at that moment I was shocked. Little worried. Yes, Jenna's insistence was strange and even more so after she. The last time she had seen Noah things would have ended so badly. Maybe the two of them were planning to get revenge and beat me up. Ten minutes later I arrived at the block where my apartment was and. I started making calls. I was going to leave a lot of people standing that week and one. Part of me kept wondering why the hell he was doing it. I arrived on the same day as Lion's birthday and late. He was the only one. Flight he had found and was not in a very good mood to say the least. It's not. That I really wanted to be there and even less have to go to Lion's house to. Celebrate it when what I wanted was to go to sleep for hours. Steve had ordered my car to be dropped off at the airport, so I went. Straight to my square and got into traffic almost exceeding the limits of. Speed. He had told Sophia that he would see her there, although he wasn't sure. That she was going to have time to go, she was almost as busy as I was. Jenna and Lyon's apartment was in a nice residential area. Close to the university campus but without university students, which made it the perfect place. Many newly married couples moved to that area. From my point of view, the only thing wrong with it was that it was not near the sea. Shortly after arriving I found a parking lot near the apartment. Before getting out I took off my tie, threw it on the back seat. I undid a few buttons on my shirt and tried to comb my hair a little with the fingers, but it was in vain, he looked like he had just come off a plane and completely exhausted. I knew Noah was going to be at that celebration and I even got a little upset. Highly strung. I had no idea what his attitude was going to be when he saw me enter the door. Door, I just hoped that he had his weapons safe, that day he was not ready to fight with anyone. I entered the portal and took the elevator. I went down to the fourth floor and when it opened, the doors I heard the commotion that was going on there. The door to the apartment was open and there were people drinking at the entrance. I knew most of them and they all. They greeted enthusiastically when they saw me arrive. When I entered, the first person. What I saw was Jenna, who was dressed in a very pretty dress and heels. She had two drinks in her hand and she seemed to sense my presence because she stopped. She on the spot and she came straight towards me. My God, you're here. She, she exclaimed in a rather hysterical tone. I'm here. She screeched, imitating her whistle voice. She didn't laugh at my humor, what's more, she looked around nervously. If that. She was weird. Since you didn't confirm anything, I thought. I told Lion I would try, but I didn't get a safe flight until. This morning, but well, here I am, I said, 
snatching one of the glasses from him. Red ones that she was holding in her hand and putting it in her mouth. I made a disgusted face. What the hell is this? I exclaimed, returning the glass. Pineapple juice, Jenna answered, raising her eyebrows. I looked at the people around me until I returned to my eyes. About her. Pineapple juice. We're twelve years old and I didn't realize. Jenna blurted out something unintelligible and she handed me the other glass she was holding. Whiskey. Hum, that was better. Well, Jen. Where is Lion? In the kitchen, I see you now, she replied, slipping away in the direction of the lounge. I don't know why, but she decided to follow her. The room was packed with people. And I had to elbow my way in until I could see over the heads of the present as Jenna leaned over someone who was sitting on the couch. I went there and saw that it was Noah. Just when Jenna came back. Getting up, Noah turned to where I was and even with the distance. That separated us I saw that he turned pale. Lion appeared in front of me and gave me a hug that almost broke all my bones. Bones of the back. Thanks for coming, man. She exclaimed and I smiled back, although without. Completely take my eyes off Noah, who was no longer looking in my direction and seemed. Having tightened like a violin string over the sofa cushions. Lion followed my gaze and nodded. The poor thing. She's been there since all this started, I told her I didn't do. He needed to go down, but he insisted. Yes, I agreed in a dry tone. Only Noah would think of going to a party when he was crippled. I finished the last of my drink and left the glass on the grand piano. He had gone there for one reason only, right? I knew it was bad as soon as I saw me approaching and he didn't run away in opposite direction. She was very funny there on the couch, in a colorful sweater. Black and a knitted blanket covering his legs. Her face was radiant. So much so that I felt a prick in my heart when I approached and sat down right. In front of her, on the table in front of the sofa. I looked with a smile at the of her twenty-eight freckles of her nose of her that I had missed so much and my eyes became. They lingered on her lips for a few seconds too long. Look at you, you look like an injured little bird that can no longer fly, I commented with. A smile on her lips. I didn't want to relive the last thing we had shared, Noah. Broken in my arms telling me that she loved me and asking me to please. Him not leaving her had tortured me every night since she had returned to. New York. I thought you weren't coming, she commented, clinging to the blanket as if she were holding it. Life in it. I tilted my head and nodded a few seconds later. I made some calls and they gave me a seat on a commercial flight. I'm blown away, I had never traveled in economy class. Noah nodded, looking at me distracted. Because? Would you be sitting there if you had known she was coming? I continued. Seeing that she didn't say anything. Her cheeks were dyed a pink too attractive for my mental health. But at least he had hit the nail on the head. All good. I asked, unable to avoid speaking to him with the sweetness of yesteryear. Something didn't feel right to me and I started to get a little nervous. Noah looked everywhere as if searching for something or someone. The music is not. It was too loud, but it dulled my ears and gave me the sensation of. That to her too. I'm fine, just a little tired. Who are you looking for? I told him in a tone that made his eyes. They noticed me again. I saw in her eyes a fear that I had never seen before. Seen, and I tensed, looking everywhere, waiting to see what I had gotten. Provoke that fear in her. 
it took me a little longer than necessary to understand that it was me she was afraid of. Suddenly, and before she could ask him directly what was wrong, Jenna appeared next to us and she sat on the couch next to Noah, she took his hand and sat down. She squeezed it tightly, causing a huge smile to spread across her face. Face of her. Everything is good here. I went to answer, but then Noah opened his mouth. Lion. She, she shouted. My friend appeared in a flash. You can carry me. Above? I think I've had enough for today. Jenna pouted and glared at Noah with her brown eyes and when I saw. As Lion leaned over to pick her up in his arms, my body moved. Instinctive I put a hand on his chest to make him stay still. I suddenly felt cornered, I noticed a strange atmosphere, and that Noah. Preferred Lion over me, even having me in front of me had hurt me. Just like a kick in the stomach. I'll take her upstairs, I proposed, relaxing my posture. I crouched next to. Noah and I caught her off guard, he reacted by clinging to my neck tightly. The. I noticed trembling under my arms and I hurried out of that room. Crowded towards the stairs. I didn't ask you to lift me up, she reproached me and I knew that she was. Clenching his teeth tightly. Great, she had already gotten him pissed off. I went straight to the guest room of the house. I knew which one it was because. I had stayed there a few times after spending time with my friends. Lively evenings and being unable to drive after countless beers. I pressed her against me, perhaps in an inappropriate way considering. We weren't dating, and I inhaled the scent of her neck as I leaned in. On the bed to leave it on the pillows. In too much of a hurry, especially if she was screwed from behind, she pulled the Blankets down with her feet, she got inside her and then covered herself with them. Almost completely. I looked at her in disbelief, trying not to laugh. Then she reached out and grabbed mine, pulling me to sit up. Next to her on her mattress. She sat up until her back was lying flat. Over her headboard and looked me straight in the eyes. There is something I have to tell you she announced with a trembling and squeezing my hand that she had held tightly. I frowned as I waited for her to continue and just as she was about to. Speaking, the door to the room opened and Sophia appeared on the threshold. Noah paled until he was practically colorless. They told me they had seen you come up, Sophia said, looking at me with mock. Calm. I stood up and looked from one to the other. Looking at Noah, I knew that nothing good could come of that meeting, but I. Worst of all, it wasn't Sophia he wanted to follow down the stairs, but. Quite the opposite, I wanted to close the door in his face and listen to what he. Noah had been about to tell me. 36. Noah. Tell him, Noah, tell him, tell him, tell him tell him. I had been repeating that in my head from the moment I saw him in the living room. By Jenna. He had thought that with everything that had happened and how angry she was with. That whole situation, the attraction I felt for him would have disappeared, I don't know. Now she was going to be a mother, weren't my priorities supposed to change? Well at... It seems not, because when I saw him crossing the room to approach where I was there, my whole body started to shake and not just from nerves. He had been kind, too kind for what he had me for. Accustomed, and I was practically left speechless. To get up. As I had done it, I was afraid that he would notice something, I don't know, maybe that I had gained some. Kilos. Lion had noticed it, and Nick had never been able to resist the urge to sting me, so either he hadn't noticed or he knew the atmosphere was tense and he preferred to keep his mouth shut. Despite his nerves, 
he had managed to muster up enough courage to tell her. That we had to talk, but everything had exploded in my face when the my bedroom door opened and Sophia appeared, just in time for me. Interrupt one of the most important moments of our lives. I don't know if it was because of the anger I felt inside, the hatred towards Nicholas for having brought it or even because of the desperation that came over me when I confirmed that they were still together, that they were a couple, that he belonged to her, but I felt that jealousy tore me inside. Never in my entire life had I felt my heart beat so fast in the presence of someone, all my instincts. They made me want to leave that room and never see them again. My condition must have affect many me, because I felt like a bubbling in the belly, a slight movement, almost imperceptible, but it brought out all my instinct. Maternal in spurts and without filters. Outside my room. I screamed madly. They both widened their eyes as I grabbed the first thing I had. Within my reach, which turned out to be a pillow, and I was throwing it hard at Sophia. He. The pillow barely touched it, so I started to grab something else with my hand. Had to hit the target, but then Jenna appeared in the doorway, looked. She surprised Sophia and then she quickly looked in my direction. My hands gripped something harder this time, I think a lamp. Get her out of here. I ordered loudly, raising that heavy object. At that precise moment a hand grabbed my wrist, it was Nick. He looked at me. Furious. What the hell is wrong with you? He bellowed. I felt the sudden need to ask. Damage. Damn idiot. Didn't he realize? Didn't I see it in my eyes? With the hand that I had free I started to punch him, until it was impossible for me to continue because he also immobilized me. Nicholas, leave her. Jenna screamed, just as hysterical as I was. I tried to get out of his grip on her, I squirmed and put pressure with my body to to leave me alone, it was at that moment, when I exerted myself, that I noticed a slight humidity between the legs. I was paralyzed. No. No, 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 no. I felt that panic overcame me, that an intense fear took over. Of every cell in my body. I started to cry, and Nicholas let go of me and walked away. Looking at me perplexed. Nicholas, get out of here, Jenna ordered in a tone she had never seen before. Use with anyone. I didn't see when he left, nor did I hear what she said to him, I just hugged myself. Under the bedding. I'm sorry I brought it, Noah, I didn't know that, Jenna apologized next to me. Ear. I shook my head trying to calm down, I needed the adrenaline. Disappeared from my body, I needed to be relaxed, for mini me, for the baby. For my baby, who was restless because of me, I could tell. Jenna stood next to me, smiling half-heartedly at me as she. She wiped away the tears that ran down my cheeks. Everything will be all right, she stated calmly. I promise you, everything will work out. Good. I nodded, wanting to believe her. Before, I said in a broken whisper, I noticed something strange. I think. That I have stressed the baby and that has caused. Jenna opened her eyes in fear and I carefully sat up. I got off the bed and went to the bathroom. Jenna waited and I walked out a few minutes later. False alarm, I announced with a trembling voice. Jenna sighed, closing her eyes and I felt some peace again. Being stuck in a room, without much to do, leaves you too. Time to think about it. I had to go back to the doctor shortly and no matter what happened, I was going to have to start making decisions and making myself 
I take care of the situation alone. To begin with I was going to have to go to myself. Apartment, I couldn't keep driving my friends crazy. It was clear that what had happened the day before could not happen again. And the pressure of telling Nicholas was sapping my life force, I had to. I had to tell him, and now, there was no turning back, he was Minnie Yo's father and Minnie Yo was going to leave. From me in about four months, which meant that very soon I was going to have to. Putting the baby's needs before mine. As little as I wanted. Share this with him and no matter how angry I was, I had no choice. I had thought of telling him in a subtle way, you know, testing the waters, and keep his reaction of him engraved in his memory until he died me, but the seeing Sophia had destroyed any vestige of kindness and tact. So the next day, during those moments of loneliness and inactivity, take a decision. Phone. Contacts. Nicholas Leister. I'm pregnant. Send. End of the problem. If I told you that I regretted pressing the button almost instantly, would you think? Very cowardly of me. I stayed silent, looking at the screen, almost unable to breathe. After five minutes it started ringing. Over and over again. I grabbed the phone with two fingers, almost not wanting to touch it, and threw it at the feet of. Bed. Oh, shit. Why was she suddenly terrified? Jenna. I shouted almost breathless. A minute later my friend came up to see how she was. Can we go somewhere? I said getting out of bed and opening the cupboard. But what are you doing? She asked alarmed. Go back to bed. I grabbed some leggings and put them on in no time. Then. I did the same with a sweater. I have a terrible desire to go to that ice cream shop the other day. I put on her shoes without Jenna being able to stop me and stopped in front of her. Looking into her eyes. I'm having a super craving, the biggest one I've had so far. Please take me, I'll stay sitting in the car, I promise, but. I need to get out of here. Jenna seemed hesitant, but after persisting for several minutes she ended up accepting. We got in the car and only when we lost. Looking at the house I could breathe deeply. I stroked my belly nervously, over and over again. Oh, Minnie-me, your father is going to kill me. Jenna's phone started ringing just as she came down to buy me the frozen I took it with trembling hands and put it on silence, despite knowing that she was doing wrong. God, I had dropped the bomb and now I was running away. When Jenna brought me the ice cream, I could barely eat a couple of spoonfuls. Before telling her that the craving had passed and that she now felt like throwing up. I knew it wasn't because of the baby, but rather because of panic. Then I'm going to take you home she said, putting the keys back in the car. Contact. No. I shouted, startling her. Why don't we go to the cinema? That's something. What can I do, right? I will be sitting the entire time and resting. If you want to see a movie, we'll rent one, Noah, but you can't be around. There, you need to be in bed, so no. Jenna. I shouted exasperated. How can I stay stuck in that for another hour? Room I'm going to end up going crazy. Do me this favor, damn it. My friend's lips pursed in disgust. Since you've been pregnant, you've become unbearable. Had you. Saying. A couple of times, but come on, move, move, I encouraged her. When we arrived at the cinema there was still half an hour before the show started. Session, so we waited sitting in the car. I'm going to tell Lion that we won't arrive until later, I'm sure he's. Wondering where we've gotten ourselves. 
I snatched the phone from his hands before he could see the calls. Losses. But what the hell is wrong with you? She, she snapped at me, no longer able to contain herself. Give me the phone. Oh, shit. I will but if you promise not to be angry with me. Right now I am one of the nerves and I need you on my side. Jenna seemed to have some kind of revelation. What have you done? She, she asked me, trying to remain calm. Bye. What are we running away from, Noah? We don't run away, we just, hide, she pointed out with a small mouth. She snatched the phone from my hands and stared at the screen. Fifteen missed calls from Nicholas. She, she screeched, looking at me perplexed. And. Another ten from Lion. What the hell have you done? I buried my head in her hands and Jenna pulled them down to. To be able to see my face. Have you told him? You can say yes. Jenna glared at me with her almond-shaped eyes and waited for me to explain. She may have sent him a message. Telling him that you have to talk to him. I looked at her in silence for a few moments. Telling him that I'm pregnant. Her eyes widened in horror. Noah. She, she shouted, not believing what she heard. Have you gone crazy? As. Does it occur to you? You have what you deserve, I didn't want to tell you in person, Jenna, I'm afraid of your. Her reaction. Doing it by phone allows me to maintain a distance of kilometers. Of security. He must be climbing the walls. Did you say anything else in the. Message. What exactly did you put? Dash, I'm pregnant. I responded with a shrug. Hey no. You look at me like that, I also received the news in a pretty ugly way. Remember. Jenna ignored my words. But have you told him it's his? I stopped in my thoughts for a moment. I think it's pretty obvious that it is, I answered, although I hesitated at the end of the sentence. Phrase. It's Nicholas we're talking about. Oh, damn. I thought Mini-Me belonged to someone else. I was shocked to find out that she was four months pregnant because I couldn't. Noticed if Nicholas had done calculations he would have concluded that. He was not his because he was so little noticeable to me, he would believe that he was missing. Damn, I would believe. That he belonged to someone else. Give me your cell phone, I asked Jenna. She handed it to me instantly. Yes, talk to him. She said, taking a deep breath. By the way, it's yours. Send. He's already there, I announced, leaning back on the seat. Jenna turned to me and snatched the phone out of my hands. By the way, it's yours. She, she shouted, now losing her temper. But to you. What's the matter? Do not yell at me. I shouted at him in turn. It's the only way I can think of. To talk to him without him destroying me. Let's go home right now, she said, putting the car in drive. No, Jenna. Do not do it. I begged him dash. Please, please, give it time. For me to assimilate it, for me to assimilate it. God, God, stop, stop. You're crazy, she told me. As she had the phone in her hand, she saw the call. She incoming and she attended without even hesitation. Jenna. I pronounced her name hysterically. She ignored me. Yes, he is with me, she said to whoever was speaking to her. Well. Tell him to calm down, no, lion, you and I will talk later, but I don't want him to. Be more nervous than you are, that's bad for the baby. Well, tell him. Oh shit, that really made me more nervous. 
we'll arrive in five minutes. I looked out and felt like I was being taken to the very Guantanamo. When Jenna parked outside the apartment block it was like my entire blood would concentrate in one place on my body. I noticed myself shaking because I didn't. I had no idea what her reaction was going to be, I didn't know what she was going to say to me and, the worst thing. Everything, he was afraid that things would not go well and he would end up staying. With Sophia and I without my baby and without the person she was in love with. I opened the door to get out of the car and saw that the entrance door to the apartments opened the instant she put her feet on the ground. Nicholas emerged from it and fixed his eyes on me in a way that he wanted to make me disappear and the earth swallow me up. Instinctively, I went back into the car and, without even thinking about it, I activated the lock and was locked inside. God, she was acting like a real coward. I felt stupid when Jenna crossed her arms next to my window and looked at me, shaking her head. Head of her. Nicholas then appeared in front of me and looked at me through the glass. He seemed out of it, although he tried to appear calm. His eyes on me. They watched with concern, and then he pointed something at me with his finger. Open, he ordered calmly. I shook my head, looking at him as if he were a slaughtered lamb. Nick put his hands on the window and leaned over it, almost hiding my entire field of vision. Can I at least come in? He said after silent deliberation, I assumed. I watched as Jenna took the car key out of her pocket, she showed it to Nick and he finally fucked her. He caught her and walked around her car to climb into the seat of the driver. I looked at Jenna with a look of hatred. She simply apologized to a tiny smile as she picked up Lion, who had also left. Accompanying Nick, by the hand and pulling him into the house. Nick opened the door, sat down, and without saying anything started the car. Put on your seatbelt, he ordered me as he pulled the car out of the parking lot. Parking lot and joined the road. God. Why didn't it explode? Or was she talking? Or did it at least say something? He. Silence was killing me. After several minutes of unbearable silence he decided to speak. Only you would think of saying something like this in a text message, I said. He reproached, taking a deep breath, as if he were trying not to explode with me in the car. Inside, lest it splash me. Yeah, well. I wanted to do something original he replied. Nicholas turned to face me, the vein in his neck throbbing under his eyes. Skin of him. You almost gave me a heart attack, I almost didn't have an accident. In. What were you thinking? He asked me, raising his tone. Minnie me reacted to his voice in that bubbly way, just like the night. Former. I found it curious that he only did that when Nick was with me. I guessed the butterflies I had always felt being with him now. They had become a baby. My hand instinctively rested on my belly. And the gesture did not go unnoticed by the erupting volcano next to me. His eyes were fixed on that area of my body, then on me and then he. They automatically diverted onto the road. I didn't answer his last question, something told me it was better to stay. Quiet Nicholas continued driving, it seemed like he was still taking it in and that he needed to keep his hands busy until he could finally face me. Half an hour later I realized that he was going to the beach. When arrived, an inner peace went through me completely, I felt that I was beginning to Relax Nick seemed to feel the same, because he took a deep breath after. I watched the surf for a few minutes and he turned to look at me. Directly into his eyes. Am I going to be a father? He asked, 
and I saw fear in his blue eyes. I shuddered from head to toe at that question. God, that man. The father of my baby was spectacular. If everything turns out the way it should, we're both going to be one, I responded with. Nervousness. I still can't believe it. How is it possible? He said still without removing me. The eyes above. I raised my eyebrows almost to my hairline. You don't want to go there, Nick, believe me, I warned him with annoyance. Not yet. I had forgiven for this. Can. He asked my permission, ignoring my answer. His hand approached towards my belly, but he stopped halfway. Waiting for my response. I reached out and took his hand from his to my belly, with mine on top of the. Hers. It was an incredible moment, a moment that, despite everything bad and. Of everything that I still had well stored inside me, I would remember to. Always. Nick then lifted my sweater and placed his hand on my skin. Naked. My entire body burned at his touch. How much? He said with doubt as he continued caressing me. Amazed, as if amazed at what was beneath my feverish skin. Because yes, have I already mentioned that his hand on my navel was making me. Warming up and a lot. Five months, I answered, releasing a shaky breath when his. His fingers went too low over the small roundness. I stopped his hand from him before. That caused me to go into cardiac arrest. With the other I pulled down my sweater almost hastily. Enough touching, I ordered nervously. Nick looked at me in a way that was both intense and amused. Have you noticed him moving? He asked focused solely on me. No, but it will start doing it soon. I just felt like a bubbling. Like popcorn exploded inside me, I don't know if I explain myself. Nick laughed at my idea and I returned his uneasy look. There was. Too much tension contained in that car, more than it could bear. How long have you known, Noah? He said suddenly serious. I figured it was better to be honest this time. More than three weeks ago. More than three weeks is a long time. Plenty to call me and. Tell me, don't you think? He, he reproached me with annoyance, looking angrily ahead. I watched him with a frown. I was angry with you. To be honest, I still am. Nick turned to me in surprise. Angry, why? I looked at him in disbelief. This is your fault, I said, pointing to my stomach. I was still reliving the moment when I let him make love to me without protection, but what? Moron. Nicholas laughed in disbelief. I think it would be more accurate to say that it's our fault, freckles. Technicalities, I replied, looking at the sea. Nick seemed amused by my answer. One of the most beautiful sunsets was taking place before our eyes. Beautiful that I had ever seen, I assumed that nature wanted to give me that gift. Paint with beautiful colors a picture that was still too gray to be able to name it. As much as we were now both aware of what was about to happen. Arrive, I couldn't get the last conversation I had out of my head. Had with Nicholas before he left for New York. I didn't know how we were going to proceed, and I wasn't sure yet what role I wanted Nick to play in all of this. I'm tired, you should take me home, I asked him, feeling very sad. Suddenly. Nick turned to me and stretched his arm behind my neck. There. His fingers caressed me lightly before forcing me to look at his face. I want you to come with me, he announced then, catching me by the guard down. I want you to take your things and move in with me today. Apartment. No, Nicholas, I'm at Jenna's house and in four days. 
I'm not going to argue about this, he interrupted me. Thereupon he put in. The car runs. What are you doing? I asked surprised. Take you with me. Fuck, we're starting. I don't want to go. It is my son that you carry inside you, so I am going to make sure that he is. Good. It is my son who is inside me, and I am already making sure that he is. Good at all times, thank you for your interest, I replied indignantly. You have to rest, right? She asked me then looking. Alternately to me and the road. Yes, but. Until the doctor tells you otherwise, you stay with me. There's no more. What to talk? I went to reply, but I knew I had everything to lose, especially since I didn't. He could make sudden movements like kicking him, for example. I. I just crossed my arms and stared at the road. It had only been a few hours since she had found out about the existence of Mini-Me, and he already believed he had the right to dispose. Yes, Mini-Me, that's your idiot father.